Louisville, Kentucky, a place known for good food, southern hospitality, and general friendliness. Things like bluegrass music, bourbon, and horseback riding. But Louisville is known as the home of a not-so-friendly place as well. A place where the walls harbor secrets, and the wind whispers a frightening tale. Considered to be one of the most haunted places on Earth, today we are taking a look at Waverly Hills Sanatorium. The land that is known today as Waverly Hill was purchased by Major Thomas Hayes in 1883 as the Hayes family home. Since the new home was far away from any existing schools at the time, he decided to open a local school for his daughters to attend. He started a one-room schoolhouse and employed a teacher named Lizzie Harris, who began to call the place Waverly Hills due to her fondness of Walter Scott's Waverly novels. Major Hayes liked the peaceful sounding name and decided to name the property Waverly Hill. After his daughters grew up, Major Hayes then sold the land to developers, who then sold the land to the local medical board towards the end of the 1800s. In the early 1900s, Jefferson County was severely stricken with an outbreak of tuberculosis. Due to the natural state of the nearby wetlands, it soon became the perfect breeding ground for the bacteria. To try and contain the disease, a two-story wooden sanatorium was opened and consisted of two open-air pavilions, each housing 20 patients, for the treatment of early cases. Due to the continued battle with tuberculosis, in 1912 the board was granted funds to build additional hospital units on the property. These units were to house an additional 140 patients, and this included an additional building, as well as a children's ward. The lack of space and continued battles with the bacteria led to the construction of a five-story building that could house an additional 400 patients in 1926, and it was this building that would become synonymous with the Waverly Hills we know today. In an effort to cure patients of their affliction, some of the treatments were brutal. Doctors removed ribs and muscle tissue in an effort to allow people's damaged lungs to breathe. They also devised treatments such as inserting balloons into patients' lungs to help fill them with air. However, both of these methods proved ineffective and would often kill the patients, subsequently ending their mortal suffering. Until the invention of streptomycin, the tuberculosis vaccine in 1943, the diagnosis of the disease was a death sentence, and those who passed away from it had to be disposed of somehow. Staff did what they could to prevent other patients from having to see the dead carted off, so their solution was a body chute or a tunnel that led from the hospital to the nearby railroad tracks, and from there a motorized cable system lifted the corpses into trains to take them away for final disposal. During the continued pandemic known as the White Death, many staff who were otherwise healthy met an early demise as well. Room 502 at the hospital seemed to harbor depression and sadness. One nurse was found hanging from a light fixture in the room, believed to be a suicide. And shortly after this time, another nurse jumped out of the window to her death. The room was then closed due to these events. And fortunately, because of the introduction of the vaccine in 1943, the cases slowly but surely began to dwindle, and there soon became no need for a tuberculosis hospital. So in June of 1961, Waverly Hills Sanatorium formally closed its doors. However, this was far from the last time the buildings would be used. In 1962, it was rebranded as Woodhaven Geriatric Center, a nursing home that primarily treated patients with varying stages of advanced dementia as well as the severely handicapped. But over the years, after various reports of patient neglect and abuse, 
It was closed by the state of Kentucky in 1982. It was then in the works to become a state-run prison in 1983, but soon had the prospect dropped after locals protested. It was since then sold to a private investor who runs ghost and history tours on a semi-regular basis, even today. But all those years of negative events and energy seem to be manifested in various ghostly activity. Staff and tourists alike have reported numerous ghostly experiences, from regularly smelling baking bread in the kitchen that has been out of use for decades, to experiencing the presence of a small ghost child named Timmy. Timmy was around six or seven years old when he passed away in the hospital and is now seemingly trapped within its walls. He wanders the hospital trying to have fun. Visitors often bring balls for him to play with and many have claimed to see the balls moving all on their own. But people also report more terrifying apparitions, such as seeing the ghost of an old woman who roams around the hospital, moaning with her bleeding hands chained to her feet. Although when approached, she runs away, screaming in agony. And they also believe that the entire land is haunted by a grim presence known as the Creeper. If you've ever felt an overwhelming feeling of doom that you can't explain, then you may have come across a being like the Creeper. The Creeper is a dark and terrifying entity that crawls along the floors and walls of Waverly Hills. Some believe the force to be demonic, while others think it could have been a human spirit twisted by trauma and sadness. Whatever it is, people are invariably filled with dread and sorrow upon visiting the grounds. So what do you think? Is Waverly Hills haunted, or just a dark place with a twisted past? Make sure to let me know down in the comments below, and if you'd like to support our work, like this video, check out our Patreon link below. And please share this video with a friend. If you haven't already, subscribe with the bell so that you don't miss any new content. Until next time, this has been Cody here at Mystery Archives. Thank you so much for watching and have yourself a wonderful day.